Hi, I'm Daniel Connard and this video tutorial will show you how you can use our Edge Commons extension library to include parallax crawling into your Edge Animate composition, basically with only one line of code. It's really an easy way to upgrade your design without the trouble of adjusting the animations with dozen line of code. Impressive, huh? By the way, you can find even more crazy stuff and everything about the Edge Commons and Edge Animate on edgedocs.com. But I don't want to keep you in suspense any longer, so let's get started. Well, as you can see in this demonstration, parallax crawlings means that part of your layout uh, behave relative to the scroll bar of the browser so that visual elements change when you scroll up or down. Now, the opinions may vary here whether this is useful or rather distracting, um, but I think if you use it in a modest way, it might actually draw the attention of the user to certain aspects and also uh, provide a unique experience. So decide for yourself if you want to use it. I'll just give you a quick walkthrough uh, how you can achieve this effect with our Edge Commons extension in Edge Animate. So um, let's start with a new project here because I want to show you from scratch how I did it uh, to make the parallax uh, work properly. I uh, use width of 1920 pixels and a height of 3200 pixels. Uh, so it can be displayed on a large monitor or display whatever. Um, I of course zoom out so that I can put the layout there properly. Apparently uh, Edge Animate does only feature zoom factor to 50%. So if you need more space according to small displays uh, you can manually adjust it a little bit, not on the left side so much because of all the panels here, but uh, as you've seen on the bottom and the right side as well, it's scalable, so uh, you can make yourself a little bit more room for layouting. So uh, first of all, include all the images I've already contained in an image folder, and um, I always or I usually use the add function here for the besides the assets panel so that I can include all the images at once. And um, as you have seen probably on the uh, demonstration at the beginning, or I can quick show you again, um, the entire project here consists of three different pages. So um, every time the background color changes, we can call it a different page. So um, as you can see here, I've indicated the positioning of the images or of the assets um, according to the page number. So this helps me to set the layout properly so that everything goes according to its place. Um, just a little tip here, so uh, especially with big compositions, that is really helpful. So we start layouting. And thanks again for uh, Sima Vidyaya and Jackie Shepers for setting me up with the entire assets here. They did a great job, and uh, I really like the uh, the layouting or the the um, the graphical assets they provided me with. And uh, check them out, especially Jackie Shepers. She's a good artist here. And um, so we go over to the second page and start with the background image here. And now, especially with uh, so many uh, items on a big display or a big stage, um, it's sometimes a little bit tricky to align the elements properly. So uh, here you can use the snapping line. And I start with the names because I can put them pretty much into the center of this page, horizontally speaking, and then put the characters underneath so that they are pretty much centered in the middle. And uh, Annie could go a little bit to the front. She's so cute. And um, yeah, I put them not straight on a line, but more distributed throughout the room or to, to gain or create a roomy feeling here. So, but you know, it's just, a little bit uh, layouting here. I mean, uh, it's just a demonstration and I just want you to see how the principle works. So 
uh, never mind if probably the layout gets a little bit messed up or uh, the animations later on don't look that good. It's just to teach you how you can introduce the parallax. So uh, going on with the third page and I put it neatly in here, the background image, make sure that nothing's overlapping at the bottom or that there's no room left. I can now start placing the iMac image straight to the center again using the snapping lines to find a good position. And uh, this little fellow, by the way, is uh, one of our images of the Dirty Little Helpers, again done by Jackie Shapers. And uh, it's a scalable vector graphic, so I can rescale it and uh, it won't change the quality. It's a good thing that Edge Animate does feature scalable vector graphics now. I think uh, here's a good spot for, for our little dragon fellow. So um, just to show you that uh, it works with native elements of Edge Animate as well, uh, I just draw a rectangle and add some texting. So, so just uh, create some text box here with probably some rounded corners looks a bit better and I can also add some shadow if I like I mean this is a good thing about Edge Animate uh, you see what you get and you can just start going crazy with the layouting and with adding elements and um, so Again, text also can be included. I'll just type in some stuff here. Parallax is fun. Go ahead and scroll again. And uh, probably make it a little bit more visible by changing the text font, uh, font size, sorry. And can also make it semi bold here. But it should, yeah, it should should go into one line. So I can align it here, put it into the center of the box and probably change the text coloring. So Edge Animate really is straightforward here. You can just use the tools to create awesome designs. And now let's check it in the browser if uh, it really looks as intended. And uh, yeah, I think that should do for now. But as you see, there's no movement yet. Obviously, we haven't introduced any animations so far. So what we're gonna do now is we will just use simple animations created on this timeline here, uh, just like you used to in Edge Animate with these characters and all the elements here. And we will later on synchronize the timeline of Edge Animate with the vertical scroll bar of the browser. So that when you scroll up or down, the playhead of the timeline will be moved to the left or to the right. So the animations would go back and forth. So starting with simple animations here and again I just keep it really simple, uh, not too much fancy animations here. Of course you can introduce whatever animations you like, it doesn't matter. Um, I just make it real quick here so that you guys know what I'm talking about and I think you're more interested in the parallax feature itself than in creating fancy animations here. I mean, if you're used to Edge Animate, you can pretty much, or I'm pretty sure that you can create way better animations than I can do here. So, uh, but probably for those who are not so familiar with Edge Animate yet, you might take a closer look of what I'm doing here. So probably I just explain it a little bit. Um, the animations with the pin down there, um, pretty straightforward. I can select all the characters at once and drag them off the stage. And you see at the green line that I hold the shift button pressed so that I don't uh, change the position on the Y axis here. I can use some easing as well. So ease out will make them appear fast from the side and then slow down as soon as they get near their destination. And I can quickly show you how that looks like. 
as you see, all the characters come flying in at once now, but I want them to come in one after the other. So this is pretty simple. I just manually reposition the animation on the timeline here. So dragging them over to the right side would introduce some sort of delay and so they come in one after the other. So it's really basic animations but with a quite a good effect here. Especially if you think about uh, this parallax later on. So now uh, the logos here can be animated as well of course. And again keeping it simple just visibility change and um, probably let let them appear from underneath. So if you're not so familiar with animations, uh, if the pin is blue, you change the state to the relative position before. But uh, yeah, try that out on your own. Um, so this little fellow here should appear on the monitor when I scroll down and I want to use some sort of elevator effect for that. So um, that is done by using clipping effect and movement on the y-axis and uh, I'll show you in a bit how that works because it's easier shown than explained. So it should come up here when you scroll down and um, again using the pin for the animation I now have to clip him from underneath. It's important to clip from underneath because I want the head of him appear first. So change it to zero here and now I have to start from the bottom of the screen. So move the entire element to the bottom of the screen and also use some easing here because uh, an elevator would come up more quickly and then slow down once it gets near its destination. So it's just to make it a little bit more uh, attractive. So uh, again the text and the text box can be animated as well. Um, so to make it really quick here I again use visibility and for the text and probably let it appear from the side. So this time maybe the left side. So over here. Just drag it off the stage. Disabling the pin again and there we go. So uh, I can now go back to the browser uh, to check if all the animations run as intended. It's always good to, to uh, cross check every once in a while so uh, that you make sure that everything is working properly. And uh, as you can see now, the animations run just like I intended them, but they run only one time and there's no movement when I scroll up and down, of course, because they are just simple animations so far and they are running one time and then they're done. So we have to introduce the synchronization yet. And um, that would be pretty damn complicated if it wasn't for our edge comments that would do all the heavy lifting for you. So all you need to do is introduce the Edge Commons extension library into your project and this is done with the yapnope function. Those of you who watch the other videos uh, might already know about this. For those who don't, um, I use yapnope and the load function here uh, to include our CDN version of the Edge Commons and I can just introduce the URL here and I can show you that all you need to know is on the cdn.edgecomments.org page. So uh, how you use that is explained here again. Um, it's really straightforward. You can just copy the entire code here and um, I just have to copy this URL of the latest version 1.00, 1.00 
so I typed it in manually, but you can copy uh, the entire code there as well. So no worries there. It's just the basic edge comments in the latest version that it's loaded here. So nothing fancy yet, but it needs the core of the uh, JS to work properly. And of course we have to wait until, oh sorry, just deleted too much here. Of course we have to wait until the edge comments are loaded completely. So once that's done, I can introduce a function for our parallax to work. And here's the one line of code that I promised that is all that is necessary for the parallax to work once you get the edge comments going. So it's basically just ec.parallax.setup and then for the stage. So sim here represents the stage because we want the parallax edge comments feature to work for the stage. And that's it. That's all the code that you need for the parallax to work here. So all the synchronization with the browser will be done by this snippet of code. So the edge comments do really do the heavy lifting for you. I uh, would like to introduce some other edge comments features quickly here as well, which is uh, the debug function, which is really helpful. And you guys should get used to include this as well. So you can make sure that the edge comments is loaded properly and you can use the console to also um, check which version of the edge comments is loaded. So um, if you're not so familiar with uh, using code or coding yourself, you can just copy this code snippet yourself and everything should work fine. And uh, the second uh, edge comments feature, close it here first, uh, I would also like to introduce is the center stage uh, comment feature. So usually if you start a composition in Edge Animate, it will start at the top left side of the browser. And sometimes you want it to be centered. So in the browser window, especially with the parallax, if you have not like I do now, the, the entire browser window uh, occupied with, the, uh, with your composition, center stage really helps you to get everything, oh sorry, laid out more, uh, yeah, more properly. It just looks better if it's run in the middle of the browser and not on the left side. So, but that's all you need to know here. And uh, we're pretty much about Done. So let's check it in the browser if everything works. Et voila. When I scroll down, the animation starts or just goes as far as I scroll down. And when I scroll up again, it reverses. And that's it. So probably you might want to. Uh, it readjusts the animations a little bit once you've created the parallax effect because uh, it needs a little practice to get everything smoothly, uh, the positioning of the, uh, of the animations on the timeline uh, to be really synchronized with the, uh, with the position of the browser window so that the animations don't start too early or too late. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick walkthrough here. So try it out on your own. If you have any comments, any requests or whatever, you can always contact us, visit us on edgedocs.com or if you want to tribute, uh, GitHub, Edge Comments on GitHub. Um, there's also for those of you who want to get more into uh, this whole uh, background stuff, you can check it out on GitHub and stay tuned for more videos.